I would spend the last 15 minutes trying to find a flattering angle to my face. It turns out my face has no flattering angle. Abstract classes versus interfaces. Now this is a very basic question and what prompted me to make this video is that I've been doing interviews for my company for a bit now and uh, we sometimes ask basic level questions to establish where a candidate is in the spectrum, right? Are they junior? Are they senior? Where exactly are they? So this is one of those questions that I like to ask sometimes. So the question is, uh, what is the difference between an abstract class and an interface? Now, because it's a very basic question, I like to throw a twist in there uh, just to re really make sure that the candidate knows the concept. So what I like to say is, and this applies to Java interviews, but it may apply to other languages that are strongly typed. Um, the, the twist is, uh, in Java 8, you now have interfaces with public methods that have bodies on them. And in Java 9, uh, we are expected to have interfaces that have private methods. Given this, what is the difference between an abstract class and an interface? Now, the catch in the question is that I'm making it seem as if with these new additions, the, the difference between the, an abstract class and an interface is a little blurrier. But the reality is that it's not. They were just as different today as they were before. So the way you want to answer this question is the same way that if I ask you what's the difference between an airplane and a tree, you don't start by listing the subtle differences between them. Right? No, they're just completely different things. I know that maybe it's a bit of an exaggeration, right? But you go like, one is a freaking transportation vehicle made by people and the other one is a living organism. So you want to start with the core distinction between an interface and an abstract class. So let's get there. The biggest difference between the two is purpose what they mean semantically. An abstract class is something you use when you want to generalize behavior. An interface is what you use when you want to standardize behavior. That's not a subtle difference, right? So if you have multiple implementations and you see a pattern across them and you wanted to generalize that using an inheritance hierarchy, okay, you create an abstract class and you put the general behavior at the top. Now, whether I prefer classical inheritance over composition, that's a question for another video. But the point I'm trying to make here is you're trying to generalize behavior from the more general to the more particular. Now, with an interface, what you're trying to do is you're trying to build a contract, right? So you're trying to say every implementation has to adhere to this contract that I'm defining through an interface. The purpose of the interface is to standardize, right? So now once that's clear, you're able to tackle more specific questions. Like for instance, the reason Java and some of the languages that have inheritance do not allow multiple inheritance, that is extending from more than one class, is because if two parents have the same method, which one do you take? It becomes uncertain as to the behavior that your class will inherit, but you can implement multiple interfaces. Why? Because, see, in the case of an abstract class, it really matters which behavior you're taking. Are you taking the one from this parent class or the one from this parent class? With an interface, uh, it doesn't really matter because the purpose of an interface is to standardize behavior, not to generalize. So if two interfaces have the exact same signature, that's okay. It just means that your object adheres to that, to that signature to answer the question as I framed it in the beginning. If you have a method with a body in an abstract class, the purpose of that body is most likely to generalize that behavior, like I said. However, in an interface, if you have a method that has a body on it, the purpose of that body is so that we do not break existing implementations, right? Because remember this, when you have an interface, you have to implement every single method in there. So if your interface has three methods and you add one, you have to go to each single implementation and add an implementation to that method. So otherwise your code will not compile. 
So in order to prevent that from happening, because sometimes it's hard or impossible for us to change every single implementation, especially if you have a very generic interface implemented by a lot of people, in order to prevent your project from not compiling anymore, what you want to do is you want to add a default implementation. And you want to say, well, if you do not provide an implementation, here's the default one. But again, note the difference in purpose, okay? One is trying to generalize behavior. The other one is just saying, in the case of an interface, it's just saying, look, if you haven't gotten around to implementing this method yet, here's a default implementation for you so you can compile. Now, once you've gotten this major aspect of the question out of the way, you can move to uh, more subtle differences, right? So in one, you can't have private methods. Uh, well, you will in Java 9, but you can say, well, you can't have private fields. You can go through more, right? You, one, you can extend from a single class, but you can implement multiple interfaces. All right, so that's all I have for you today. I hope it was clear. I hope this helps you in your future interviews. I have a series I'm going right now uh, called Explain Like I'm Five, in which I go through a lot of concepts like I released a video about TLS. I'm going to release another one about OAuth and Kubernetes and programming advice in general. So if you are into these kind of videos, do not forget to leave a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can find out when new videos come out. I hope this was useful to you and I'll see you guys in the next one.